What is up guys? I'm Professor Eclipse and last week the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire trailer came out and I've been thinking about this thing the entire week. Uh, Ghostbusters is a big part of my childhood, a big part of my adulthood. I do have a proton pack and I just I wanted to go through this trailer a little bit deeper and give uh, kind of a screenshot by screenshot, uh, play by play of some things that I'm picking up on in the trailer and uh, maybe uh, getting into a little bit of spoiler territory or at least uh, speculation as far as what this movie is actually going to be about. So let's jump into it. We're going to start a little further in the trailer than the beginning because the beginning doesn't have a whole lot other than just establishing that it's summer and then an ice something or other shows up. Uh, this scene right here, we have the storm coming into New York City. The storm itself seems to be coming from across the sea, which does make some amount of sense because Dan Aykroyd has said in the past that he wanted to do a Ghostbusters movie set in Scotland. Uh, he wanted to go uh, across the pond, as it were, to have a Ghostbusters movie transpire there. So it suggests to me that the new villain actually does come from maybe Scottish folklore, uh, but not 100% on that. What we do know is that this specter has control over ice, uh, as you can see by uh, that taxi being destroyed there. The next shot that we have is of the Ecto-1 in the trailer. It does uh, kind of a loop-de-loop -loop and, and spins around pulling a Yui in the middle of the streets of New York. Uh, as some of you know, there were videos of this on TikTok and Facebook video and stuff like that at one point uh, when they were actually shooting on the streets of New York. A lot of what they did at that point was uh, this, this car chase stuff. They didn't have the actual actors on scene. It was a lot of just uh, stunt performers and stunt drivers doing uh, the work on this. And... From what I can tell, it looks like this scene probably happens uh, earlier on in the movie. If I had to guess, I would say this is part of the first probably 10 to 15 minutes of the actual movie. There's a scene later on in the trailer where there's a lion that's uh, one of the lion statues out in front of the New York Public Library uh, coming to life. And I believe what's going to end up happening is the Ecto-1 is going to be chasing down that lion in the streets of New York, probably within the first few minutes of the movie. Okay, here we get our first shot of Phoebe. Uh, wearing the Ghostbusters uniform. She's wearing the proton pack. If you look closely, that proton pack is the HasLab pack. Uh, it is unmodded. Uh, it doesn't look like they have put the Alice frame on it at all. That is stock out of the box, a HasLab proton pack. So, for those of you who bought one, myself included, we officially have a 100% accurate movie prop, finally. <laughs> The other major notable thing uh, that I notice in this is that her uniform seems to be covered in slime. Uh, now, it's entirely possible that that could just be ice and it's frosted over, but it does look like it could be slime that has been frosted over to me, which would make sense because they have shown in YouTube videos, uh, promo videos for the Rise of the Ghost Lord, that VR game, uh, that... They, they had some influencers on set, basically, and they showed off the, the slime blowers from Ghostbusters 2. My guess is those are going to come into play uh, a little bit heavier on the back half of the movie. Because, you know, the monster seems to be able to kill you through fear. And in Ghostbusters 2, the mood slime was a positive energy. My guess is at some point, Phoebe might be on the verge of getting frozen or something along those lines and they end up sliming her just to counteract the fear it's possible uh if not phoebe then definitely lucky later on because we'll we'll get to that and in this shot we have trevor lucky and an unknown new character for the film uh, this guy, there's a lot of speculation about who he is. Uh, some people think that he might be Janine's kid. Uh, some people think it might be Louis Tully's kid. You know, maybe him and Janine got together and had this dude. Um, it's possible that it could be Oscar. A lot of people think that it could be him. Uh, just all grown up. 
I think it's a little bit more simple than that. I think what we're looking at here is a situation where the family, the Spangler family, moved back to New York, but Lucky and Podcast and the the rest of the cast that's from uh, that small town, they didn't move whenever the Spangler family did, because why would they? It's They're not, like, related or anything, so it doesn't really make sense for them to move. Uh, I think what ended up happening was Trevor and Lucky tried to make their relationship work, and the long distance didn't work out. And I don't know how much time has passed between Afterlife and this film, but my guess is that Sony decided to throw, uh, you know, that classic love triangle wrench into the mix. And I, I don't say this because I'm excited for it. <laughs> I say it because it just feels like that's probably what's going to happen here. I think that guy, whoever he is, is probably her boyfriend. And it's very awkward, <laughs> and it's teenagery, and I personally, if I'm right, this is going to be my least favorite part of this movie. During this section of the trailer, Patton Oswalt's character is giving a, a little bit of backstory, a little bit of information to some of our other characters. Uh, based off of some of the other screenshots from the trailer, he's probably talking to Ray, Phoebe, and Podcast. And he's basically talking about the summer where people froze to death, which happened in real life. There uh, was an event that happened in 1816 called the Year Without a Summer. And basically what happened during that year was uh, Mount Tambora erupted uh, as a volcano in Indonesia. It triggered a global climate change, and that was the year where it was cold. Cold the entire year. Uh, no summer happened, thusly, the year without a summer. And in this particular screenshot, it looks like the people in it, uh, are not from the current era. It looks like it's probably a flashback, probably going back to 1816, and showing that the eruption of the volcano was actually this entity the whole time, and, uh, that's what actually happened and why people froze to death back then. The next couple shots that we have here are going on while Patton Oswalt is doing his thing and talking. Uh, but it's basically just a, a couple of shots where there's an apartment door that is getting frozen over. And then it bursts open and the cloud monster, uh, which... Oh god, a cloud monster. Um, the cloud monster comes into the apartment. So presumably this is where the Spangler family maybe lives at this point and it's coming for them, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. It, that's my guess, though. In this shot, we see Phoebe, and we see our first glimpse of Podcast wearing that super dope, uh, that jacket that's got the whole, like, 80s, early 90s kind of vintage thing going on. Uh, looks like he's grown up quite a bit. I, out of everybody that is in this movie, it looks like he looks the most different. It does look like there are some books in the background, and based off of the shot with Patton Oswalt a few moments ago, they're probably at the New York Public Library. We also have this shot of Kumal Nanjiani. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right, hopefully. Uh, but the books in this shot look strewn about, so it suggests to me that this particular shot is not with the rest of that, and this is actually happening at Ray's Occult. It's also not shown, obviously, because it's a screenshot, but uh, the building starts to shake during this scene, too, so an attack could be happening at this point. And now we're back to what I believe is the New York Public Library. We have Ray discussing with uh, everybody what the death chill is, basically, uh, and take a particular look at his sweater there. Uh, because it looks an awful lot like this scene where this guy right here is getting um, you know, kind of attacked by the lion. Uh, I can't tell if that's Ray or not, but it looks like it could be. I'm not sure what's happening there, but it does suggest that all of these scenes kind of all take place at the New York Public Library. 
I'm kind of hopping around in the trailer a little bit at this point, but we've got Winston here, and uh, in the next shot, we also have Peter Venkman. Uh, it looks like these two shots are in the same scene, uh, but you can kind of tell that the Proton Pack's got a couple of little upgrades going on, and they are inside the firehouse waiting for something. Uh, because maybe they heard something. I don't I don't know, but they do look concerned. <laughs> so uh, probably this is around the same time that the actual attack on the firehouse happens. And this, of course, is where the actual firehouse gets attacked. Uh, the doors get blown off the hinges. They hit the No Ghost logo outside. It makes it jerk around. We don't know if it actually knocks the sign down. I hope it doesn't because I love that sign and I don't want to see it get destroyed. Um, but here we also see the new upgrades that they got to some of the equipment here. We've got the Proton Pack having the new yellow bumper, which uh, a lot of Ghostbusters fans out there are referring to as a thong, uh, because it is a uh, three-pronged uh, bumper there. Not really sure why they decided to go that route, but I do really like the yellow. Uh, it's very industrial. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, where uh, in the previous scene, that's where Vankman was standing, but now... It looks like we have Phoebe, and she's holding some sort of I, some sort of equipment. It doesn't look like we've ever seen that equipment before. Personally, I'm hoping that it is a a boson gun of some sort, uh, because I really like the 2009 Ghostbusters video game and any opportunity that they have to start incorporating some more of that tech and that equipment into the movies. I'm excited for that. Uh, granted, it could be something completely different, who knows, but hopefully. And then we have the ice breaking the ground itself, shooting up, causing the Ghostbusters to jump to the side, and it runs right up to the Ecto-1. Hopefully it doesn't split the ground open under the Ecto-1 and cause it to, like, go into the ground. <laughs> I really... I don't like the idea of seeing all this stuff destroyed. It kind of hurts a little bit, uh, but it kind of feels like that might be what they do. And then this part here, uh, it looks like this could be part of this same scene. Uh, the, the lighting is different. Of course, that could be a, a post-production kind of thing just for the trailer. They could change that. Uh, but it does look like they are hugging the wall and the ice is there, so maybe this is what's going on. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell in the trailer, but that would be my guess. And this is where we get into Danger Zone territory, because the containment unit is not something that you mess with. We learned that in the first movie. Uh, I do think that they are being a little bit sneaky with this, because it doesn't show any ice. Uh, I think that this is kind of following up on what happened at the end of Afterlife at that last little clip where the containment unit starts to blink red. Uh, so maybe, maybe this is where the film picks up uh, and the containment unit takes some damage and then maybe that's what causes something to happen. Uh, but it looks like Either what's going to happen is this is the beginning of the movie or this is when the big bad shows up to do something. And at this moment, we don't really know what it is that the big bad has come for. Um, maybe it's coming to absorb the spiritual energy from the containment unit if this does happen later in the movie. Uh, but I, I just don't think that's what's going to happen. If I had to wager a guess at all, um, I, I think I'm going to go with the idea that this is on the front half of the movie. Uh, maybe what happens is we get a little bit of that nostalgia bait uh, and maybe Slimer busts out of the containment unit or something like that. Uh, the damage to it just allows more of a trickle of ghosts to come out and that's when we see maybe Slimer. Uh, maybe we see the Scolari brothers or just something that we've already seen before. Uh, and then that, you know, that feeds into that whole nostalgia thing. And of course, it'll sell toys. So, and then, of course, we have Lucky here. Uh, it looks like she could be in the firehouse. 
the red light, I, it could mean anything, but if we're to assume that the previous shot and this go together, uh, maybe the containment unit goes into some sort of self-containing lockdown. Uh, maybe Egon put some more protection on it after uh, Walter Peck shut it off in the first movie. Uh, but this could also be something that's just totally unrelated to any of that. In this shot, we have the first visual on what we assume is the big bad for the actual movie itself. Uh, the peculiar thing about this shot is that it's putting on horns. That's not usually something that, uh, you know, demons have to do because they just, they just grow them that way. Uh, but my best guess here is that the horn is going to wind up being some sort of MacGuffin. It's what starts off this whole process. It's the cause of all of our woes, so to speak. Uh, my best guess, more than likely, somebody... Some dummy blows into the horn and it causes, uh, you know, the entity to figure out where the horn is and then it makes its way across the ocean to New York and then that's where we get uh, all of the stuff that happens in this movie. One thing that I thought was cool and a thing that I would like to see in the movie is uh, when they're doing that flashback, maybe they're actually showing the, the history of the horn itself. Uh, what I would like to see in that situation is maybe, maybe Tobin. Uh, of Tobin's spirit guide is the one who actually took the horn or found it during his travels while he was writing the Tobin spirit guide uh, and he brought it back with him to the United States and that you know has been in a museum or hidden for a certain amount of time just to add to the lore a little bit of the the Ghostbusters history uh, just because we haven't seen any of that anywhere except in the comics. And here we have another shot of the unnamed new character. Uh, people have scoured this photo trying to read the name tag to see like if they can see you know, who this is. Um, I think that in this particular situation, if we're going with the idea that he is Lucky's new boyfriend, uh, that jacket is not his. Uh, so I think the whole thing is just a big red herring. And the, this guy is wearing it because it's cold. <laughs> that's, that's all. It's just an extra coat that they had. Uh, it belonged to somebody else. And he's the one wearing it. Of course, I could be totally wrong about that whole thing, and I kind of hope that I am. I really, really hope that I am, and I, I hope personally that this is Oscar, uh, because I would like to see how he grew up. And then we have Phoebe here, Callie, and Mr. Gruberson. They're all geared up. Uh, it looks like they're probably in that apartment uh, earlier where the spectral smoke entity thing busted in uh but it could also be a scene where they're actually in the firehouse just in a part that we haven't seen before just kind of hard to tell then we go back to uh Patton oswald's character phoebe podcast and ray uh, they're hopping in an elevator it looks like this is probably back at the scene where they're at the public library um, nothing super notable here, just it kind of confirms to me that all of these scenes are all kind of taking place together in the movie. Then we have this shot, and this shot is probably, to me, one of the weirdest in the whole trailer. We have Kamal Nanjiani's character, and we have Lucky. Uh, it looks like they have opened this secret pantry doorway into what looks to me kind of like a sex dungeon. Uh, but I, I know it's not that, <laughs> but, uh, on the right hand side of the photo, you can see literal dungeon chains. Uh, and then on the left hand side, you see like this weird bassoon horn type deal. I don't know, man, this particular scene is weird. We don't see any other clip of this in the entire trailer. And to me, this is probably like the human bad guy secret lair. That's the kind of vibes it's given me. So it's possible that we could have a human element uh, of a bad guy as well as the actual spiritual uh, bad guy in this film. 
Then we do a cut to Lucky. She is now wearing the actual equipment and she is scared out of her mind. And you know what happens when you get scared in this particular movie? You freeze. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, she is getting iced over. Uh, it cuts to a close-up of her eye freezing over. Uh, I think that what happens here is it's it's gonna be another red herring situation. She's not gonna be frozen the entire movie or anything like that, I think. I, I assume that this is where the slime blowers are gonna come into play. Uh, she's gonna get saved just in time. Granted, the good vibes of the slime are probably gonna put her out of commission, uh, but it is going to save her from being frozen. Skipping ahead just a smidge, we've got this picture of Trevor, uh, Finn Wolfhard's character. He is making the goofiest face that I have ever seen in a Ghostbusters movie, ever. <laughs> um, but he is firing off the proton pack at some unknown thing. Uh, he is still wearing uh, what looks to be summer attire. He's not geared up, at least, other than actually wearing the proton pack. Um, it looks like he could be in the firehouse. It looks like that might be the attic, and that ladder back there goes to the roof. Now, if I am right about the containment unit not being part of the frozen battle and instead being uh, kind of picking up where Afterlife left off, I think maybe the the whole like ghost getting out situation is what leads to Trevor busting a ghost in in this particular scene uh maybe if it is slimer for example he goes up to the attic uh and then uh trevor chases him down and tries to catch him that that, that would be my guess as to what might be happening here uh if i'm right about the actual uh containment unit then we have our title card ghostbusters frozen empire uh it frosts over and then it cuts to the scene where we see uh, the silhouette of the big bad. It looks like his horns got very big <laughs> after putting them on. And it looks like the shape of the light silhouette that's coming from behind, uh, it looks like that's probably inside the firehouse and that uh, curved door look is where the doors got blown off earlier in the trailer. As far as why he is at the firehouse, I don't know. Uh, it could be to get that spectral energy from the containment unit. That is a an ongoing theory for a lot of people. Uh, though he could be there for something else. Maybe they have something else that he wants. I imagine we'll get some more information on this entity as time goes on. I, the movie comes out in March, so it's basically right around the corner. We just got to get through the new year and then it's it's basically here. And then the last shot of the trailer. We have the family on top of the firehouse looking at something. Something CGI because they're all looking in different directions. And my god, the drama that has come from this single screenshot. <laughs> these jackets, these parkas are a point of just ongoing nonsense from the community. Uh, it took less than 24 hours to figure out what the jackets actually were. Turns out that they are a modified version of a fancy, a very expensive Canadian parka that is designed for sub-zero temperatures. The thing costs like $2,000 Canadian. I ain't paying for that. I'll wait for the cheaper version to come out or I'll make my own. Uh, but it does look like they have changed the No Ghost logo on it to a black uh, no sign. Uh, just kind of based off of what the picture looks like. And uh, they've also made it bigger to make a, a better contrast with these jackets. Uh, I think the jackets look really cool. Uh, it, it gives it more of that firefighter vibe to it. Uh, and of course in the movie it's cold. Granted, they aren't wearing beanies and they aren't wearing gloves. They're just wearing these very expensive parkas. Um, so that kind of throws me off a little bit. But 
Nah, what can you do? I Somebody's probably already bought this very expensive parka and made a 100% accurate replica because that is how dedicated the Ghostbusters fan base is. And that covers the entire trailer. Uh, at least the parts where stuff happens. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this movie. Like I said, Ghostbusters is a huge part of my childhood. Uh, as far as speculation goes... Uh, I know a big question is, are we going to see Slimer? Are we going to see Vigo the Carpathian? I doubt we're going to see Vigo. I do think we will see Slimer. Uh, my guess is he's either going to creep his way out of the containment unit, like I said earlier, where uh, this is kind of a, a red herring and the containment unit busts a little early, or probably the more likely scenario with Slimer is we're not going to see him until like a mid credit stinger. Uh, kind of like what they did with Sigourney Weaver this last time. Uh, it'll probably be something fun and goofy and not part of the actual movie at all. Uh, because they seem to be wanting to take this era of Ghostbusters and put it in a... Uh, a fresh situation. They don't want to rely too much on the past, uh, rehashing those old ghosts and stuff like that. I think instead what we're probably going to see is uh, some new ghosts. Offhand, I would say they're going to do a repeat of what they did with Afterlife and create some uh, live-action versions of maybe the old Kenner toys. Uh, maybe some of the old ghosts from the real Ghostbusters will make some sort of an appearance in this thing. Uh, one of the things that I'd really like to see if they do the Slimer situation is do what they did in the 2009 video game and have a visual containment unit uh, where they have a ghost like hanging out in the, the viewing unit. Uh, maybe they could have Slimer in there. Uh, that would be pretty cool. If not Slimer, you know, maybe we could see some other ghosts. Maybe uh, the Scolari brothers, because those guys were creepy when I was growing up. They're probably my favorite ghosts in the whole series, uh, as far as that goes. And I, I would like to see them again, but at the same time, I also don't need that kind of nostalgia bait. As far as the equipment goes, yes, the slime blowers are a must. It, they were part of the gear. You've got to you gotta use it. And uh, it does look like, according to uh, some of the YouTube videos that are out there, they're going to be using those slime blowers at some point in the movie. Um, I think it's going to be to counteract the negative vibes and the fear side of things. Uh, just, just my two cents on it. Uh, but... This is this is what I have thought of the trailer in general and where I think we're going with it. Of course, now that the SAG after strike is over, uh, we've got the actors able to talk about things and promote the movie, so we'll probably get more and more information as the months go on. Personally, I don't know if I'm going to watch any more trailers. Uh, I've seen this one, and as far as it goes, like, I'm already sold. They don't got to sell me on the movie anymore. I'm going to go watch it probably like six or seven times in theaters. I've, I've got the Regal card. I might as well. So it, now it's just a matter of getting more people on board. Because from, from what I've seen on the internet, it seems like uh, Ghostbusters fans are kind of torn on it. Most of them seem to be excited for it, and then you've got, like, your naysayers and detractors, of course, that say, like, oh, the CGI doesn't look good, or, oh, you know, they're not doing, uh, you know, Sam Hain, or, you know, any of these other, like, the Boogeyman, stuff like that. Like, I would have loved to have seen that stuff, but I like where they're going with it. I want to see where they're going with it, and I don't care if they're kids, man. <laughs> like... I know that they're kids, and I know that it's weird, but at the same time, we don't know how much time has passed. They look older than they were. It, they could be, like, all 18 by now. I don't I don't know. Uh, but, that being said, it doesn't look like, uh, you know, they have set up the business as far as, like, these kids are the Ghostbusters, necessarily. Uh, it seems like probably more likely what's going on is uh, the mom and Gruberson are Ghostbusters and the kids happen to be there. <laughs> At least that's kind of what I'm thinking because uh, I don't know that Winston's uh, insurance would cover 
necessarily uh, kids ghost busting. Seems seems a little icky as far as the laws go, uh, especially with uh, nuclear items. Uh, but I, I don't know. We'll see. That's all we can do. But if you like this video, be sure to comment. What do you think? Are you excited for this movie? I am. Let's go bust some ghosts.